What is going on boys and girls? Welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. Today we're going to have a look at some settings video for PUBG console. We're going to go in depth and look at each and every setting and which you should set it to or how you should adjust your settings. So let's get to it. Controller bum preset. I suggest you start with type B settings if you are new to this game. This will make the game feel like every other shooter on the console. LT to aim down sights, RT to shoot. Most simple way to go. Inverted X axes and Y axes, this is all dependent on if you use these. Some of you might be used to these from flying games. I don't use either of these. Right stick dead zone and left stick dead zone. Both these dead zones are independent on how sensitive your stick is. If your stick has a little bit of stick drift, as you can see on the map when my stick is set to zero, it moves by itself. All you have to do is keep adjusting this slowly till the stick no longer moves by itself. My round for me is about 10 and 5, depending on how good your sticks are. Vibration. I play without vibration. I think it's the best way to play. Now we have forward running sensitivity and movement sensitivity. Now both of these are a little broken and don't make too much sense in PUBG and can be very confusing. But forward running sensitivity will make you feel like you're running on more of a grid. The higher it is, the more grid-like you are going to be like. So for PC, it can feel really nice, but for console, it's better to have it as low as possible. I suggest you be careful with these settings as these can adjust how you fly into the arena. Now, I also suggest for movement sensitivity, you have this as high as possible. Movement sensitivity is how you can move around when loosening in circular motion. The higher the movement sensitivity, the better. The lower will make it a bit more clanky. These two settings are a bit weird though and can be hard to feel the difference. Just make sure that your forward sensitivity isn't too high and your movement sensitivity isn't too low. And make sure it doesn't attack your flying capability when you're in game. I like to have mine on around 20 and 100. This feels kind of smooth to me and I'm very used to it. If you're not, have a little mess in training till you find that sweet spot for looting and moving around. Next, we have vertical sensitivity multiplier. Now this one is dependent on how good you are at controlling your recoil. I have mine on 100, but you could adjust this depending on how well you shoot in PUBG. The basic way to go around this is if your recoil is too much and you can't pull your gun down hard enough, like in this clip here, make your vertical sensitivity recoil a lot higher. 120% will give you an extra 20% pull down when trying to pull down your stick. If your scope then goes the opposite way and you're pulling too far down, the lower vertical sensitivity multiplier will be better. I like it on 100, but depending on how you're struggling with the game, you might have a better preference for yourself. This could also be adjusted in your little settings in the training ground to make it much easier. Next, we have general sensitivity. This is how your character looks around without aiming down its sight. I'd say have this around 15. This means you can switch from target, you can move around nice and clearly without having to worry. Having this too low will make you very sluggish on the battlegrounds. The benefits having this a bit higher is, is if you have a lower sensitivity, you can scope in at your enemy, unscope, and then flick to the next target without having a high sensitivity. I already use a mid-range uh, kind of sensitivity. It's not a massive issue for me, but it is very nice to have a bit higher than it is lower. This also really helps them up close gunfights with SMGs and such. Even though you were using the barrel here, being able to move around and hit fire directly on our target is a big, big opportunity. Next, we have our vehicle driver sensitivity. This is up to you. I've always kept it on default, never had a struggle with it. If driving a vehicle feels a bit clunky, make this a little bit higher. Aim acceleration. This is a very difficult one for me as I have this disabled. But if your sensitivity is a bit too low, I suggest you turn this up just a bit. The longer you aim down your sights and keep turning, the faster it will get if you have this enabled. I think it's better to have it disabled just so you can get used to it. Over the shoulder aiming. Now this is when you over the shoulder aim with the LB button on the B settings. I like to have this as closest to my normal sense as possible, but at the same time, I hardly over the shoulder aim. Get used to this as much as you can though, and you'll be able to dominate on the battlegrounds. 
I tend to just hip fire more than I do over the shoulder or just aim down my sights. But having this around your, the same as your general sense will make it a lot smoother for you. Inventory cursor sensitivity. This is how quickly you move around your inventory in PUBG. I suggest putting this all the way up to 10. I tend to use my D-pad to go around my inventory, but if you do use your analog sticks, messing with the setting could be a good option. I just put it on max and I hardly use them to actually move my inventory. Now we have our main aiming down sight sensitivity. Now these are mine on the screen right now. They're mostly around the 12 section and that is very, very basic if you want to copy me. But remember, this is very independent to the user. I suggest finding the sweet spot for yourself. So for me, having them all on 12 makes it feel really easy and I've got used to it over the time. But this does not mean it's the best setting. It's maybe too fast, too slow, too sluggish for some of you. So finding what you like is much, much better. If you prefer a slower sensitivity, I suggest you make it slower. If you like a faster sensitivity, I suggest use a faster sensitivity. The best way is go around the training mode, look for the moving targets and practice tracking the different items without even shooting them, such as the Jeeps in the car section and the same as the bodies in the top right section at the 200 meter range. Use different scopes to find your perfect sensitivity, which one you find easier to track. Remember, if you do use a low sensitivity, you can always put your aim acceleration up if that feels better for you. PUBG user on Reddit has recently come up with this information about console PUBG. These are the exact pixel densities for your settings. Now, this could be kind of confusing, but it's very, very simple. And I only suggest you change to these settings if you're struggling with PUBG a lot. Now, all you need to do is find a one-time site you're kind of comfortable with. I'm comfortable with a roundabout 13 sen sensitivity. If we line up on our graph with the one times on the left side and find our 13, we can see that is 4,500 pixels. Now, if I want all of my guns to feel exactly the same as my one times, all I have to do now is go down the graph and adjust my sensitivity settings to what it says to line up with the 4,500 pixels. So if I now want my... Uh, two times to be the exact same as my one times, we can see that would be 10.6. And then if we wanted to go to our three times, that would be 13.9 and so on down the graph. Now, once again, I only suggest you set these settings if you're struggling at all. PUBG is mostly muscle memory, but this is a great start if you're new to PUBG or you're struggling a bit or looking for a change up. The graph is in the description below and so is the Reddit user. Game DVR, get this disabled, doesn't do anything. It's not very good, disable it. Colorblind mode. You'll know if you want a colorblind mode. Some people use these because they prefer other types of colorblind. I use default. Next, we have your crosshair color. I suggest for your crosshair color, you set this for a color what isn't really in the game. I like pinky purple kind of colors. There's, there's nothing really pinky purple in the game, meaning I can always see my crosshair and I know where it is and I don't confuse it with things such as blood. I don't lose it in the sky. I don't lose it on the ground. That kind of thing is what you want to change your crosshair to. Hide nicknames in the kill feed. Have this disabled. On screen button hints, you know if you need them. Network debug statistics, this is in the top of the screen. You can see if you've got lag and such. Compass background, at the top of the screen right now, you can see our compass background. You can either enable or disable this, depending on which one you personally prefer. Disable gets rid of it completely, and that's how I prefer it. And you can only just see the compass at the top of the screen. Next, we have loot in flash effect, pulse or glow. I prefer pulse, it makes me able to see loot a little quicker. Inventory tooltips, you know if you need this, have it disabled if you don't need to know how to do your inventory tooltips. Reticle type, I keep this on default. I make the reticle brightness high. This is fine for me. It might not be fine for you, but if you find the reticles are a bit low or need to be too high, you can make them lower or customize them a little bit. For all your default firing modes, I suggest you make them all full auto to make this as simple as possible when you pick up a gun. TBB camera aim position. Reset to right shoulder, reset to left shoulder, or custom. 90% of you will use the right shoulder, but if you are used to using the left aim shoulder for some reason, you can also set it to that. So when you go for your first over the shoulder aim, it will make you immediately peak the left shoulder rather than the right. I suggest most of you pick right shoulder though.
Auto reload, self-explanatory, but when shooting a full mag, you'll automatically reload at the end of your mag. Auto equip attachments and scopes. This is when you go round the battlegrounds and you pick up loot, it automatically goes on your gun. I have this on, it could be a little bit hard to learn though. As you can see, when picking up the comp grip, red dot and cheek pad, it also actually went onto my SKS. Next we have hide helmet, auto replace weapon skin, it's up to you if you want them on. Radio message is very important, get this enabled option 1 and quick ping enabled as well. This means with the right stick by one tap you could do a quick little ping and this is very good for making call outs. Rather than calling out a number I could say he's on my yellow ping to my teammate, he can see exactly where the guy is. Next we have continue item use, put this on bandages only, this means when bandaging you'll keep using bandages till you've got to your full 70, 75 HP. Additional action queuing. This is very important. Get this enabled as soon as possible. This means your game will remember which buttons you have recently pressed. So when climbing this stool right here and holding the R2 button, my character will shoot. If this is disabled and I hold the, if I climb over and hold the R2, my game will not recognize that I've pressed the R2 button and he will just stand there. This could be very annoying, so make sure you get this enabled. There can be a couple bugs though, which can be a little bit annoying, but it's still worth it. Highlight recommended ammo and equipment. This is up to you, depending if you want it on. I have it on because I miss loot all the time. Others, camera speed. This is only if you're using observer mode. You don't need to touch these. Audio, this is dependent on you. You may want to turn off your music, your weapon sounds. You may want to change them to legacy or the new ones, depending on which ones you prefer. It's totally up to you on the audio. Graphics, safe area. This is the safe area of your screen. Some people will pull this in a bit so they can see their map and everything a little bit closer to the center of their screen. I keep this on 100. Depending if you're playing on a monitor, you might not really need to adjust this at all. But if you are playing on a big TV or something, pulling this in as close as you can might actually help you a lot more than being on a monitor. But keep this on 100 unless you're playing on a massive screen. Field of view. This depends how close or far away you want the camera to act as. 80 makes the game look very zoomed in, but 100 and what, 103 can make the game look very far away. I like 100, it feels like a sweet spot for me, but you can adjust this depending on how you're finding the zoom to be and how well your eyesight is in this game. Brightness, this depends on your monitor. If you're struggling to see things, you could adjust your brightness. And if you're, just, if you're struggling on one certain map, you can change it just for that map if you enable this setting. Anti-aliasing, if you're on a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, TAA is the way to go. This is the best setting and the most clearness. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. If you are confused by anything, please let me know in the comments below. And until the next one, we go again. Thank you so much for watching today's video. But do you want to help support me even more for free? Then all you have to do is use my creator code for PUBG. The creator code is a simple way to help support your favorite content creators when you purchase items in PUBG for free and they get a percentage. All you have to do is head over to accounts.pubg.com, log in or create an account. Once you've logged into your account, make sure your gaming platform is linked to your account, the PlayStation, Steam or Xbox account. Then all you have to do is head down to Creator Appreciation Program and type in the box Gaming Nacho and then click Submit. This helps support us huge, so thank you to every single person that uses our creator code. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll catch you next time.